guys, welcome to the Food, Culture and Travel channel. Today I'm here with owner and proprietor of Sydney Restaurant, Martin, which was the 2004 Restaurant of the Year for Sydney, and Martin was actually Chef of the Year for 2011. Now, their, what, well, what I think is their most outstanding dish of all the ones I've tried is a deconstructed black forest cake, I guess. So it's based on a cake. It's based on a cake, yeah. It's based on, um, the idea was basically, can I make a woodland dessert okay. um, with lots of different textures um, and using combinations that people really recognize, like the idea of the black forest cake, yeah. so the cream, and the, the cherries, this sort of yeah. idea. So. And it's just the most amazing dessert I've ever seen. My wife loves it, and you know, whenever we get a chance, we'll come here just for dessert, no matter what we've done for dinner. And we're actually back here for our third time tonight for the degustation menu. So I'll be a real honor if you'd show me how you construct it. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll put it together right now. Get there. So um, when did you start making this dessert? Um, we created this dessert in uh, May of 2010. Okay. Uh, and for a special degustation night. Okay. So it just came to you or it's something you've been working on for a while? Um, we were trying to work on a special dessert to finish um, our first year of being in business and uh, being open. And uh, so uh, lots of trial and error trying to get the dessert, but then just sort of one day I woke up thinking I've got an idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote it down and uh, came into work and pulled bits and pieces together and uh, very first forest was created. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And there's a few different kinds now, isn't there? I've like, been before and there was a yeah. winter one and a summer one, is that right? We do uh, seasonal depending on what's great in the season or what, okay. we can, what we can gather in the good times and the seasons as well. We, but at the moment we're using blackberries, where we cut loads of blackberries okay. and, and save them to make the sorbet. Um, but also whatever's really in season. So the jellies are made from blood oranges, which are great right now. Yep. Sometimes they're made from cherries or... Okay. Um, Okay, cool. So let's, let's make it. Can't wait. Okay, so first of all, we have um, in the bowl, we've got uh, three types of custards. One's a uh, praline and chestnut. So, chestnut at this time of year, very good. Um, a little soft chocolate um, ganache. And then um, a lavender cream. Okay. Next, we place a uh, piece of uh, just tempered chocolate over the top. Okay, now tempered means it goes snap. Snap, right? So basically, <laughs> we're making the ground. The idea is that this is what's underneath the floor of the yep. forest. Um, lots of different uh, treats, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And then what we want to do is we're just going to cover that with a chocolate with um, a mix of uh, basically cocoa and foyotine, which is like a, a cereal. Okay. Um, and in the cereal, there's a little bit of um, licorice. And this is to simulate the, the dirt this and the rocks dirt. and... Absolutely, yeah. And all the texture that you find when you're walking through the woodlands. Yep. And we don't really want to cover everything right up. We can always leave little gaps and stuff. So yep. you can see things just poking through it. Um, next we have a, a little uh, jelly. Yep. Blood orange jelly. These are um, were really just to uh, signify little uh, little jewels that you might come okay. across. And uh, where are the blood oranges come from? Uh, they're just uh, a very local uh, top of New South Wales. Okay. How much of what you use in the kitchen do you think would be Australian grown or made? Um, we focus on a lot of Australian products, but um, of my food is also uh, quite Japanese, so I use okay. a lot of Japanese products as well. Yeah. Um, I'm not too into just sourcing everything around from where I'm from, but sure. um, um, I like to I use local as well as overseas okay. ingredients, as long as the ingredients is great, great, yeah. fresh, you know. Mm -hmm. so, this is um, a little bit of green tea, um, again like Japanese green tea, and we make it into a little um, shortbread and then grate it up <laughs> and bake it. And this is to signify some moss yep. that's growing on the, on the wooden floor. Um, next, I'm going to do some tweaks. Some tweaks that we made out of um, tempered chocolate. Yep. And then we just dusted these in um, some, some cocoa uh, powder. So when, I guess you've gone through and put down the, the recipes for each step of this, yep. it seems like each element must have its own full recipe. Like yeah, there's about yeah, 20 different recipes for this one dish. Wow. It goes, I've actually just written a book for the CPA book. Okay. Um, and we're just 
just in the process now of doing it. And then when you don't realise how much <laughs> you actually have to put into a book when you when you do this. So. Oh, well, I'll get a copy of the book and put aside a full weekend and <laughs> see how I go. So a little, just a few tweaks there. Yeah. Quite rustic. We're not too fussed about everything being super plated here. Yep. Is that for all dishes or particularly for this one? Uh, particularly for this one because it's to represent the brown and the uh, shot. Yeah. Yeah, nothing sort of perfect. So um, then what we've done is we've got some um, fennel fronds, which we've just dusted in sugar um, and crystallised them. Yeah. A little bit of egg white, a little bit of sugar. And again, just to sort of simulate some grass in the, in the woodland. Uh, and again, the sorbet you change depending on what's in season. Yeah, so this is a uh, blackberry sorbet. We mm -hmm. do cherry sorbet in a couple of months when the cherries come in in yep. summertime. Um, we've done numerous different apple and cucumber. Mm -hmm. Sometimes don't relate to that one very well. <laughs> so, um, we've done mango, and, but I think that the darker cherries and the darker berries, raspberries, and yep. something work really, really well with yeah, this. Yeah. Well. So, a warm spoon, we just do a little panel of the. Uh... That's it. Gorgeous. So, is this one of the dishes that you, you'd say the restaurant's famous for? I mean, for me it is, but is it. Yeah, I think this was the, the dish that really. Um, when it was got reviewed um, in 2010, it, this was the dish that um, basically set us up and um, okay. made, made my name, which in, in the industry, I think. Yeah. yeah cool. well, thank you so much for making it for us. Okay. Pleasure. Um, yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, so you can see all the different ingredients coming together there. It really does, you know, other than the, the sorbet on top, but it does really look like a a woodlands floor there with the moss and the you know little bits and pieces it's hard to identify what is what when you're looking at it, especially after you've had eight courses and four glasses of wine through the degustation meal. I think that the idea for the sorbet on top and um, more so um, when it comes relevant is, is, is the idea originally was a cherry dropping from the tree that's okay. why we had a cherry sorbet yep um, so like fruit that drops on the ground so yep. that was the idea of the sorbet on top. Gorgeous. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Pleasure.